denizens of the internet. Former network executive reaction here. And yes, I'm going to talk about this woke shit again. I have commentators and friends, commenters, commenters and friends who have complained about why I'm always on about this Hollywood thing. And honestly, I've tried to curtail it, but because of recent encounters, it's clear we're at war with woke. It needs to be eradicated. I'm not exaggerating, unless of course you've bought into it and you feel everything is hunky-dory. Okay, so now you're going to ask me for the definition of woke. Here goes. I'm not referring to its civil rights roots. I'm talking about how it has metastasized into Orwellian rhetorical prestidigitation that supports segregation according to race, gender, and sexuality. It pits minority groups against each other in ever more elaborate hierarchies of privilege. I am anti-woke. That does not mean I endorse racism, sexism, or homophobia, just the opposite. Therefore, if you're woke, I guess you do endorse those things. See? Simple. The term has been co-opted by the new social justice ideology. And now you're going to ask, but what's wrong with social justice? When I refer to social justice, I define it as equality under the law, opposition to discrimination, and equal opportunity for everyone. But social justice activists define it as group identity trumps rights of individuals, and unequal outcomes is evidence of white supremacy or something. Yes, they're nuts. But you're here to find out how this affects your favorite TV shows and movies. So this is why so much of what you're seeing on the big and small screen is crap. It's because the studios are woke and they are hiring like-minded young things. But these young things have come prepared. Educational institutions have been stuffing their brains with victimhood word salad. The fiery crucible of many workplaces would send them running in tears, but not so Silicon Valley or Hollywood where their pale, doughy psyche can hide from the scorching light of conflicting ideas. Case in point is the evolution of the writer's room. There was a time when it was a body experience, not too dissimilar to working in a mechanic shop, but without the muffler company pinup calendars with girls in various states of undress holding tailpipes, exhaust manifolds, and catalytic converters and suggestive poses. Were the writer's rooms female-friendly? Probably not. But not because of what was said, but because men are naturally verbal bullies. Demure did not work for anyone, not just women. It was a fierce democracy in that you were never put down for participating. But the thing is, it was fun, creative, no one took offense to anything anyone said, and great work got done. Now, the main order of the day is to watch what you're saying, lest someone rushes off to HR and snitches on you as if it were Soviet-era Bucharest. And it could be for anything, a misused word, misgendering, a joke that made everyone laugh only three years ago, a triggering look. Anyway, so everyone is on tenterhooks. Many writers' rooms are now sterile affairs, and it's not enough to genuflect at the altar of woke content. The process has to be woke certified from the writers' room right through the production. But the point of this piece is that, ironically, Hollywood could be the bellwether to alter the course of the diversity, inclusivity, equity, queer theory virus. Schools have no incentive to change because the teachers working there have been thoroughly captured after years of indoctrination, believing that they are doing the right thing by creating a generation of activists who couldn't hold a real job. Fortune 500 companies are happy to spread the veneer of diversity with their BLM and rainbow-friendly mixed-race advertising campaigns. They know how to manage this dodge as they 
continue to rate the planet and drive customers using algorithmic waterboarding. Governments, especially like the one here in Canada, the nice people country, have completely bought into Die and uh, QT. So, uh, coming back to Hollywood, we know it's become a woke shithole. The evidence continues to mount, but it's one saving grace is at its core, it's an ultra-capitalist endeavor. At some point, they must realize that the woke productions are consistently failing. The rallying cry of get woke, go broke, well, I mean, it was a cute meme that proved to be correct. And the movies and TV shows have been plain garbage. I have joked in previous videos that the output of Hollywood was way better before the Me Too days. But as Andrew Doyle has said, the woke are actually the new Puritans. You will be burned at the stake for the most meager offense. Not only do we have to suffer through race, sex, and gender swapping in beloved properties, the writing is bad on top of it all. And the actors have bought into it because they live in some gated community on some Hollywood hilltop. They bathe in their stunning and brave performances. But can you name one young breakout star from the lot of them? Where's, where's the next Audrey Hepburn, Rod Steiger, Marilyn Monroe, Warren Beatty, uh, Henry Fonda, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Paul Newman, Doris Day, Steve McQueen, James Coburn? I, I haven't seen one. But I think Hollywood still knows how to do this, I think. If, if they get back to basics and ignore the screeching of the minority of idiots who complain why the one main black character in Netflix's Wednesday was a bad guy, or why Enid and Wednesday weren't lesbians, we can get through this. And if Hollywood stops hiring talentless turds, then the schools will be forced to start graduating talented ones. And as far as I'm concerned, it can't happen fast enough. To all of you who think this is hyperbolic nonsense, tr trust me, you're wrong. Read Andrew Doyle's book, The New Puritans. If that doesn't convince you, then you're suffering from woke appeasement syndrome. Let me finish off with this final thought. Perhaps the most tragic point to all of this is that we're spending way too much time lamenting the destruction of our pop culture properties, be they movies, TV shows, or, or comic books. Alan Moore was right that a lot of this complaining is coming from nostalgia freaks, but that's because there's little else out there. If we got the same slate as what Hollywood gave us back in 1985, not a great year, let's say with movies like Back to the Future, The Breakfast Club, Witness, The Goonies, Purple Rose of Cairo, Brazil, To Live and Die in LA, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Trip to Bountiful, Day of the Dead, After Hours, Pale Rider, would we be complaining so much about our nostalgia properties having been mistreated? Probably not. But that's not happening because the place is creatively bankrupt. Or there's just too much pablum being churned out, or, or both. The one thing we definitely do know is that checkbox projects driven by diversity overlords are going to be failures. And at some point it will collapse under its own weight. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.